from Fenway Park here in Boston. Today, a matchup of AL East rivals between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox baseball is next. Corbin Burns, the California-born right-hander, is on the mound. What's your take on him, Dan? This guy's kind of hard to figure out. You think most pitchers would love pitching in their home ballpark, but he struggled at home so far this season. There hasn't been a lot of home cooking for this guy, and that's something he needs to turn around and turn around in a big way. Now to the plate, here is George Brett. He will lead this one off today. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Well, these Red Sox entering play here this afternoon. They come off another loss last time out, and in fact, they've dropped three of their last four. Yeah, Matty, I know they lost their last game, but you know as well as I do, in this sport, you have to have short-term memory. You have to let it go. They can get it going back in the right direction today. All even now, 2-2. Two and two. Altogether a fine afternoon for baseball 66 degrees the game time temperature. Swung on and missed really fooled him that time for the first out. Batting second. No one on with one down and standing in one of the best two strike hitters in baseball Andrelton Simmons. Bases are empty one man out. Two balls and a strike to count to Andrelton Simmons. Big sweeping breaking ball right there. Good pitch. But if he wants to get him to swing at it he'll have to bring it in a little bit closer to the strike zone. Now the 2 1 pitch is in off the plate. Gary Sheffield will be next. The 3 and 1 pitch. Swing and a line drive. And he will make the play. Two away now. That is third. The right fielder, number 10. Gary. Sheffield. Now with the plate is Gary Sheffield. First chance for him here in the top of the first with nobody on. The 1-1. One, one. Slap hard the opposite way. That gets down and he's got himself a base hit. Some two out success to keep the top of the first alive. Dan as a former pitcher are you privy to this guy I mean he's been swinging a bat well I know it's only April but he's been using the entire field staying line to line that's what makes it so hard as a pitcher when you can't go one way when you pitch a guy in he pulls it when you throw it away he hits it the other way he's having that ability right now just to be able to get the barrel to it and he's having a real strong beginning this season Sheffield the runner at first with two gone. He's fallen behind now three and one. If you're at the plate right now you have to realize who's on deck. I guarantee you something's over the heart of the plate. You have to be aggressive in the zone right here. Ripped on the ground to first. He lays out but he can't make the play and it's through into right. He'll hold it second and there are two aboard now. That is it. The center fielder. Number 24. Standing in now, Willie Mays. And this is taken for a cold strike, and he's not in love with that call either. It's one and two now. To two balls and two strikes now. Now two and two, two on, two out. This is one you have to make a pitch right here. The last thing you want to do is run the count full to three and two. Then the runners are going to be off to the races. Two and two, the pitch towards second. 
throw on to first is in time and the Toronto rally goes for naught as the inning is over. So they get to him for a couple of hits in the inning here but they've got nothing to show for it. Toronto nothing. Sox coming to bat. You've got to tune to Major League Baseball the show. Cole Hamels gets the starting assignment in this one for the Jays. Dan any thoughts. Hey you can't always judge a pitcher by the numbers. I know the ERA is into the fours coming into this start but he's actually a pretty solid pitcher and every once in a while he could throw some decent games in there. It's not easy having an ERA under four in baseball. He's slightly over that but this guy's a better pitcher than that ERA indicates. And that'll get on by into center field for a leadoff single. There's a hard hit ground ball pitcher not that able to get a glove on it hard, hard single up the middle. Yeah watch your lips right there Dan sent it back right where it came from. So now to the plate Alec Bohm a line shot to third base but the runner is back to avoid the double play. Batting third. The first baseman, Edgar Martinez. Next up, Edgar Martinez. First swings for him in this one with a runner still at first and one gone. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1 to 1 and 2 now. Working for the punch out and the offering. Now a throw over to first and the runner will get back standing. Runners on first with one down. Grounded back up the middle. Altuve for one. Over to Guriel for an inning ending double play. On to the second inning now from Fenway Park with no score. Now to bat, Jose Altuve, and he has been, pardon the cliche, in fuego of late. Seen that average shoot up quite a bit over the past eight ball games. Here now the 2 2. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Kane is right there, and he's got it for the first out. The left fielder, Teoscar Fernandez. So that'll bring in Teoscar Hernandez. And he's definitely off to a fast start in the early part of the season. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. And he fouls this one off. The one two. One out nobody on. Just hung in there on that one. Another 2 2 offering. Now a swing and a miss. He struck him out, and it's two up, two down to start the second. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location, so a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. To the plate now, Yuli Guriel. Got him swinging, and that's the third out. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. Bottom of the inning now, and that'll bring in the left fielder, Ryan Braun.
one and two now. Into the windup and the pitch. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first out. Boy, there's nothing better from a pitcher standpoint than watching that high fastball, a high piece of cheese swung at and missed. That pitch looks so inviting to hit, but it's awfully tough to put in play. In now, DJ LeMayhew. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. And Dan DeRow, the Blue Jays, as they enter play here this afternoon. They come in winners of two straight, and they've been playing some good baseball as well. Yeah, guys, after the first four games on this road trip, they find themselves two and two, kind of par for the course. But they got to find a way to play a little bit better today, kind of turn the tide and get it working in a positive direction. Bottom of the second here with no score. Lifted down the line and left. And foul. Now the payoff pitch home. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. That exists. Next up is Carlos Correa. It's been a really slow start to the season for him, as you can see by the April numbers on your screen. Bases are empty here with two men out. One and two to the Boston shortstop. And he struck him out. So a fine inning here as he strikes out this side in order. Red Sox go down one, two, three. We'll move to the third with no score. So stepping in is Zach Collins. And he's looking to get it going. Off to a bit of a slow start this year. fouled away the offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout this guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound he's got feel for all his pitches count even at two and two tried to fool him with the changeup, but he won't offer at it three and two well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Now the payoff pitch home. Grounded up the first baseline. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Oh, and they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. That was a nasty-looking slider that time. Yeah, that was really well executed, Matt. A classic strikeout pitch. You think it's fastball middle in, then it starts bearing in on your back leg, and unless you hit it out front, there's nothing much you can do with that. Into the box, George Brett. 1-1 one, one pitch is a sinker taken for his strike one and two. Outside and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Third inning, no score to this point. This is skied out toward right. Hayward is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. Stepping up is Andrelton Simmons. Hit it hard, but lined out in his first at bat. This is when you start to lose your mind a little bit. You know you're in a slump as you walk to the plate. You finally do something good and barrel something up and it's right at somebody. Throw in the dirt but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Blue Jays go down in order. Home half of the third coming up. No score.
Striding forward now is the DH, Jason Giambi, as we move on to the bottom of inning number three. Now the one and one pitch is taken high above the zone. And a change up here but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. Well that sets up a big pitch right here Matt because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around a leadoff walk. Pulled toward right center field. Mays will wait on it. And he puts it away for the first down. Batting in. The white field. Digging in next, Jason, Jason Hayward. And he's definitely Hayward. off to a fast start in the early part of the season. The 1 1 home is looked at for ball number two. Two and two. Oh, he's got that beautiful 12 to 6 curveball, doesn't he? It's part of what makes him as good as he is, and, and he has a lot of confidence in it. He'll even throw it behind an account at times. Bases are empty, one man out. Tough curveball that time, but he's able to make a little contact to keep this at bat going. And this will miss down low in the dirt, so he's worked it full now at three and two. Fouled off. Once again, a three two. And it's fouled away. Bottom of inning number three, nothing, nothing, our score. Goes the other way as this is lined to left. And that's into the outfield for a one out hit. So a long at bat has a positive dividend when all said and done. Yeah absolutely they're not all beauties in the box score. He's able to get that ball through the left side for a base hit. Way to grind it out. Stepping in now Roberto Perez. And that one never threatened the zone. It's gone full now to three and two. Not a bad time right here to put that runner in motion. Three two count. You send the runner and if it's a bad pitch it's ball four. Now the payoff pitch home and he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole and getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. Number seven. Lorenzo. So one down with a pair of runners aboard, and that'll bring up Lorenzo Kane. And he misses again, ball four, and that's back to back guys now that have reached base via the base on balls. And that's two free passes in the third inning alone. So you have to wonder if maybe it's something mechanical or if it's just psychological. Got to get back on track here. So now into the box is Alec Bohm. Certainly a big moment in this game. Bases loaded, tie score. The 2 1 home is taken, ball three. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. Hit in the air down the right field line. Catch is made here in right, and here comes the runner from third. The tag, and he is out at the plate. And so much for our first run of the ball game. Boston strands a couple. We'll head to the fourth, still scoreless. New inning set to get underway, and that'll bring forth the veteran outfielder, Gary Sheffield. 
The old adage pitching and defense have been stellar so far. They've certainly kept both offenses in check. Smoke toward third. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. One out, base is empty, and that'll bring up David Ortiz. Lifted down the line in left. He'll take this in without much trouble, and two are gone here to start the fourth. Stepping in for the Jays, Willie Mays. Two away in the inning, and Dan, it looks like this could be another one, two, three inning for him. Yeah, he has really found a groove on the mound, and it's been impressive to watch. It'll be interesting to see how long he can keep this dominance up. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. Down low, two balls and a strike. Pitch taken, several inches below the zone, in fact. If I'm in the box right now, I'm coming unglued. He is going to throw something over the heart of the plate. He loses him on ball four. Well, they've been unable to get to this guy, so they'll take base runners any way they can get him. At the very least, you make him work from the stretch and add to his pitch total. Stepping in once again is Jose Altuve. Flyed out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Two two. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. Popped him up. Martinez waits on it. He handles it easily and the inning is over. So it's no runs, no hits, no errors, and a runner left. To the bottom of inning number four we go. And we are tied nothing-nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And up to bat next, one of the most prolific DHs to ever play, Edgar Martinez. The 2 2. Drilled to the left side. Throw on to first in time, one away. Next, it'll be Ryan Braun struck out in his first at bat. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the guy on the mound. He's getting paid to try and get you out as well. Anytime it gets up there, there's a swing and a drive, and everybody's just going to sit back and watch that one fly. A no doubt home run. So a solo shot down the line in left second home run early in the year as the Red Sox get the game's first run it's one to nothing. No surprise with that swing of the bat this guy is simply one of the best in the game right now there's not too many guys that take a beautiful hack like that in the league. Plate, DJ LeMayhew. 
timing just to tick off there as this one's fouled off to the right. Popped him up. Guriel moving to his left. He's got it, and there are two down now. Now that. So two gone now here in the Red Sox fourth and the former number one overall pick in American League Rookie of the Year Carlos Correa bats next. In front of the changeup and he can't keep it fair two strikes on him now. Oh a fastball swung on and missed and for the second time today he's gone on strikes. The Red Sox are on the board thanks to the solo home run. We're through four, and it's 1-0 Boston. Back now at Fenway Park, and here's Heidi Watney with a report. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Blue Jays to discuss his thoughts on his team's lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. No, they have not scored yet, but they have been successful in running up the pitch count, something they feel will eventually pay dividends on the scoreboard as the starter gets tired and they are forced to go to the bullpen. For now, they're sticking to the plan. All right, thanks, Heidi. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And striding into the plate next will be Teoscar Hernandez. He's set and the 2 1 pitch. Struck him out, so he's set down on strikes for the second time today. This guy is really locked in on the bump right now. He's just playing good old fashioned hardball right now. now just rearing back and letting it go. And it seems like this lineup, they don't have an answer for anything he's bringing so far. So now to the plate, Yuli Gurriel. Can't find the zone there, and it's three and one. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. Ready on three and one. Here it comes. And that's in there on the hands. Three and two now. No runs, two hits, and no errors in the game for Toronto. Hit hard to short. Fielded cleanly. And there's out number two. The bat. And now here is Zach Collins comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. A 1 and 2 count to the Blue Jays signal caller. Man he's in control of all his weapons right here one strike away from five shutout innings. And he struck him out so he's down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. One two three go the Blue Jays. They still trail one nothing. Digging in will be Jason Giambi flew out in his only at bat so far. Almost Matty almost went deep his last A.B. certainly just missed it with this guy's big power. He's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this A.B. Nope. One one a fastball high two and one now. Ah. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Did well just to make contact there as he spoils off a good changeup. After fouling off the second one, I got to step out of the box, adjust my batting gloves, and tell myself there's no chance he's tripling up on that pitch. Here now the 2 2. Swinging a ball hit on the ground. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to go a little bit further outside the zone. Three foul balls in a row. He wants to get a swing and a miss on this next pitch. Started to go. They'll look for the appeal down to third and ring him up, says the third base umpire. He's gone. 
I always like watching pitchers that attack with their fastballs until there's a reason to start mixing it up. He hasn't needed many of his secondary pitches so far in this one, and there was another good fastball for a strike out there. Standing in now, Jason Hayward. Popped up. Simmons settles under it near second, and that's the second out of the inning. Stepping in next, Roberto Perez worked a walk in his first plate appearance. The 1 1 home. Oh, and this one is hit a ton out to center, racing back the center fielder. And he'll coast into second here with a two out double. Their own pitcher is absolutely dealing right now, so. This is a big moment in this game. If his teammates can pick him up and drive him in now, that might be all they need to get the W here. In now, Lorenzo Cain. And now the count is full for the Boston center fielder. Tried to backdoor him and lock him up with a curveball right there. Pretty good pitch, but he didn't quite get it to come back all the way to the corner. That's tough to do for most guys. Looking to keep this a one run game the pitch a swing and a miss as he chased with two strikes and that will retire the side Two out double left stranded. We return to Fenway Park after this. So the batting order turns over now and set to go George Brett he's hitless in the game as is much of the rest of his team. He's set here comes the one one no offer on that one two balls and a strike. Three and one. Great A.B. up until this point. A walk right here could really just infuse some confidence into this lineup. And it's up to a 3-2 full count now. Drill down the line. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. And this is popped up near second base. Throw to first gets him, so the leadoff man's retired here to begin the sixth. So now to the plate will be Andrelton Simmons. One out, nobody on. Hit in the air out to center field. Under it is Kane, and there are two away now. So the next to bat will be Gary Sheffield. He's one for two in this one. And he takes one off the inside corner for ball two. High in the air down the right field line. And it's a foul ball. Hit hard towards center. That's in for a base hit and he's two for three. So the two out base hit and the top of the inning is still alive. And they keep the inning alive with a base hit, but you can see that's only the third hit. He's given up the entire game, so he's still in total control out there. At the plate now, David Ortiz. Still even at two and two. Again, he sends it out of play. Sheffield is off of first with two away. Oh, 
Left side, but well foul. Hey, three foul balls in a row right here, searching for that put away stuff. The 2 2. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Blue Jays held in check. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. That brings up Alec Bohm. No hits to this point. Into the windup. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. And he popped him up. But this will land untouched. Another try at 2 2. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. And that'll bring in DH extraordinaire Edgar Martinez. Bases are empty, one man out. And he comes back with a fastball one and two now now some definite signs of life in that Toronto bullpen both a lefty and a right hander begin to throw. To two balls and two strikes now. I know he missed with a fastball right there but this guy's arsenal you can't figure out what he's trying to do he's got a lot of different directions he could go in right here. The 2 2 one more time. Just stand alive, putting together a really good at bat here. All even at 2 and 2. Here it is. Down the third baseline. But a foul ball as it holds at 2 and 2. Now the pitch. And that's taken high for a ball. It's full now, 3 and 2. These last two guys are making him work quite a bit out there. Both have been long at bats and all in all he's had to make 13 throws just to them so far. Making him work out there the ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Back up the middle and that finds its way into center for a one out base hit. Hey guys that fires me up right there. He stuck his nose in there grinded out a 10 pitch a B and delivers a knock. That was fun to watch. Ryan Braun will stride in again and you can bet he'd love to do again what he did back in the fourth a solo home run here that's been the only long ball of the game so far. <laughs> Count moves to a ball and two strikes now. One two misses above the zone for a ball. And this misses so that'll fill the count at three and two. Keep in mind people the longer the at bat the higher the likelihood that this becomes his last inning. One run five hits and no errors for the Red Sox to this point. Count still full three and two. Hey last two pitches back to back off speed then he's late on the fastball. He could pretty much do anything he wants right here on the mound. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Sheffield is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. Now batting. Here comes a Toronto like skipper a out toward the pitcher's mound. And we're going to have well, a pitching change as that's going to be off for his starter this afternoon. He'll depart after five and two thirds as it'll be up to the bullpen to keep his guys in the ball game. Marcus Walden takes over here with the runner at first and two gone in the inning. DJ LeMayhew will be the first to greet him here as he stands in with a runner at first and two away. <laughs> and he 
and he lays off again ball three. Carlos Correa would be next. The three one right side but it's going to be a foul ball. Full count here here comes the pitch and he misses ball four so he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. Oh man I think this no walk is going to grind at him for a bit. Shortstop. He just missed and now the inning continues with the man in scoring position. Here's Carlos Correa now. We'll see if he can come through in a clutch spot here. Two on, two out here in inning number six. Correa in front, three balls and a strike. There isn't a hitter alive that doesn't love hitting in fastball counts like three and one. It's usually a pretty fruitful count in terms of getting a pitch to drive. And he misses again, ball four. And that's back to back guys now that have reached base via the base on balls. That's a big no no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Striding in for Boston, Jason Giambi, one of the bigger spots in the ball game so far. Base is juiced now with two away. Here's the one two. Lifted out towards straightaway center field. Mays is there as he makes the catch, and they'll tightrope out of danger as he strands the bases loaded. A couple of walks, but no damage. On to the back third here this afternoon, and we've got it for you on the show. Nick Goody is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Seventh inning ready to roll and standing in is the veteran outfielder Willie Mays. Now the two one pitch doesn't hit the target it's ball three. When you've got a guy that throws a good two seam fastball you have to be ready for him to try to run it inside and jam you. Good job to lay off that one but I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again. Three balls and two strikes to the Blue Jays center fielder. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. And a good bite to that slider as he swings through it for the first out of the inning. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. To the plate now Jose Altuve and this is taken for a called strike. Oh that's a tough call now one and two. Here's the pitch. Swing and a flare down the line. Bohm ranging into the outfield. He can't get there as it falls in. Boy this is just a case of another really good hitter finding a way even though that was a soft liner finding a way to get hits. Yeah he usually hits rockets and catches the barrel but even his soft liners fall. Dan he has a knack for keeping his bat in his zone and giving himself a chance much longer than the average ball player. Stepping in now to Oscar Hernandez on that fastball is too much for him there one and two. Altuve, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. This one's down to third. LeMayhew for one. 
On to first, it's a double play as their woes continue. The inning is over. They make it look easy, don't they? Around the horn for the double play to end the inning. D. Rodan and I return to Boston after this. At the plate now is Jason Hayward, a hit in two tries so far. Into his motion, here comes the three and one. And that misses ball four. It's a leadoff walk to start the home seventh. That leadoff walk is a great way to start this inning when you're looking to pad the lead. Could be the beginning of good things here in this half inning. So here is Roberto Perez. It was a two bagger for him in his last at bat. Nobody out, runner on first. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches, attack the strike zone early, a lot of deep counts, and working himself into a lot of trouble. The two one will not catch the zone, ball three. And he lays off there, ball four. So back to back walks have him in business here with nobody out. Now batting, center fielder. Number 16 Lorenzo. takes the mound as he's been Dang. called upon to pitch. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Toronto. Number 16. Lorenzo Cain will be his first test out of the bullpen and it'll be a tough test indeed as he'll face him with two on and nobody out here. And he can't catch the corner here so he's behind three and one. When you're playing close games like this base runners mean everything so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. And he misses ball four. So he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. Oh, that's a walk that could really change the complexion of the game. With the bases loaded, if he gives up a base hit right here, it could get real ugly. Now at the plate, Alec Bohm. Not much in the way of productivity from him so far, but he's got a chance to come through here in a crucial spot. Yeah, it's time now that he has to put the rest of those bats behind it because none of that matters if he can clutch up when it really counts. Two one, here it is. And it misses three and one now. is struck into the gap in right center. That's going to get down and head toward the triangle. One run is scored. It's cut off. So all three runners are in to score. Base is loaded and he was looking to drive them all in the second he stepped into the box. Puts a big swing on this thing and the ball just gets down to the wall allowing everyone to come around and score. He'll take a three run double every day of the week. Into the box now, Edgar Martinez. Now a ball hit high in the air out to center field. Catch made out there in right center as the runner will tag from second. And as a result of that errant throw back in, he'll advance 90 feet here and move up from second to third. Into the box, Ryan Braun flew out last time up. Three runs already home here. Lifted in the air out to right. Catch is made here in right, and here comes the runner from third. 
And the run will score on the sacrifice fly, so it's now a 5 nothing game. Hey, talk about having a productive inning. You like to see that. You like to add on runs anytime you can. And a sack fly here gives their team another insurance run, and they're starting to blow this thing wide open. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Giving Chase is Hernandez. He's there to track it down, and that'll end the inning. So they score four times on just one base hit, no errors, and no one left. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Red Sox five, the Jays nothing. Gregory Soto has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. So here's Yuli Gurriel. He has no prior history against this pitcher. Here's the 1 1. Too much dip on the sinker, laid off for a ball. A little early and now it's even at two and two. Into the windup and the pitch. Now a swinging bunt. Here now the two two. Now a ball lined hard toward deep right field. And that'll get down out there for extra bases. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. That was a great job of driving that ball, extending his arms very well, was able to get it over the right fielder's head, one hopping it off the wall for an easy double. That's one of those solid hits that you don't even feel coming off the bat. So now to the plate, Zach Collins. One ball, Swing and a miss on the sinker, and it's one and two. And some action now in the Boston bullpen as a right-hander's up and throwing. Grounder down the line at third. And now time is called here as in the bitterest of April ironies a beach ball has made its way onto the field and as I reach for another jacket and a cup of coffee there's some kind of cruel joke in play right about now. Here he comes again one two. Guriel stands at second with no outs. A swing and a ground ball to third and that's out number one. Ready now is George Brett. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. The 1-1. One, one. Swing, high drive, deep down the left field line. This ball is slicing, and it's off the green monster. Guriel rounds the corner and is headed home. He is in time, and he's cut down at the plate as they team up to gun him down. He's trying his hardest to help his guys get back into the game, but this time he had no shot. Applaud the hustle, but the decision was a costly one. In now is Andrelton Simmons, and his guys are looking to erase that donut on the scoreboard with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, Matt, they've been really shut down so far in this one. They've had runners on base, but haven't been able to string anything together. Both teams with six hits so far. And nothing will come of the two out double as the inning is over. One left for Toronto. Need to get it going soon. It's five nothing.
Number 58 enters from the bullpen to do the pitching. Number 58. Bottom of inning number eight set to go and stepping up as the shortstop Carlos Correa. The three one and this is taken here for ball four so the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eighth. Now that the designated hitter. Jason. Next will be the designated hitter, Jason Giambi. He flew out in his last debut. A runner at first with no outs here. And this is taken for a cold strike, and he's not in love with that call either. It's one and two now. To two balls and two strikes now. The 2 2. Line drive, base hit to right. And that runner will hold up at second with two aboard now. It was pretty obvious in live action that that ball was hit hard. And after analyzing it with our show track technology, we see that our eyes did not deceive us. 114 miles an hour was the exit velo, an impressive swing of the bat. Into the box, Jason Hayward. And he wasn't going to hit that one with an oar. The strikeout, and there's one gone. The catcher, number 55. Next up for the Red Sox, Roberto, Roberto Perez. Perez. Correa on second. Jambi is over at first with one away. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Has a look now the pitch tried to shoot the corner and he missed it two and two not sure if that was a great take or if he got locked up on a two seamer running away but either way it worked out well for him that's a well thrown pitch though the two two is laid off and the count runs full looked like he tried to elevate a fastball on that two two pitch there but kind of overdid it with a pitch that high it's pretty easy to lay off if you're the hitter and now a slider in there for a called third strike and there are two gone now it's never a good look to strike out looking but it's way worse when you do it with a guy in scoring position those are the times you really want to see a guy battle and at least put the ball in play At the plate, Lorenzo Cain. One ball and two strikes to count. Two down, runners at first and second. High in the air down the right field line. Right fielder giving chase. He gets there to make the catch, and that ends the inning. Boston strands a couple as they're unable to add to their 5 nothing lead. Tyler Clippard comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. That'll bring up Gary Sheffield. Even at a ball and a strike here's the pitch. Edge of the zone that time taken and ruled a strike. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Right guy, right spot. This is one of the better hitters in their lineup. Just the guy they want to see coming up now to get this inning going. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. But it bangs off the out of town scoreboard. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. Sometimes when a reliever comes in the game, he wants to get that first strike so bad that he serves one up, and that's exactly what happens here. The first battery faces just rockets one off the wall, and now he's got to worry about another base hit, potentially bringing home a run.
In now, David Ortiz. Hit back up the middle. Reined in. And there's one down now. Next, here is Willie Mays, 0 for 2 on the afternoon so far. Runner at second here with one man out. Rolled slowly down the first baseline. And the off balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. Up next, Jose Altuve. And he needs to make something happen. They're down to their final out here in the ninth. Men on third with two down. Swing and a liner. And he'll put this one away. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, in a quick series like this, you take the first one, you're guaranteed at least a split. They'll take that every single time. 5 nothing. the final score today. The Boston Red Sox took the lead in the fourth and held on until the end. Corbin Burns earns the win his second. So that will wrap things up. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, and our whole crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, head to theshow.com. Final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious Boston Red Sox: five runs, seven hits, no errors. As they left ten men on base. For the Blue Jays, no runs, seven hits, no errors. They left seven men on base. Afternoon baseball for you now on the show coming your way from venerable Fenway Park here in Boston. Today we've got a contest out of the American League East between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Boston Red Sox. It's Red Sox baseball on the show and it comes your way next. Jordan Montgomery gets the ball for the Red Sox in this one. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, Matt, this guy is a real good two-seam fastball, and you'll know if it's good because he'll have good run and sinking action to his arm side. He'll throw it to all four quadrants of the plate, and he needs that pitch to be effective in this game here today. Striding in is George Brett, and we are ready for some daytime baseball. Popped him up. And he'll stay with it here as he puts the squeeze on it for route number one. Batting second, the shortstop, Andrelton Simmons. 
Next to hit is Andrelton Simmons in his career versus this pitcher. He's two for three. Did well just to make contact there as he spoils off a good changeup. Not an altogether bad afternoon for baseball. 54 degrees here at first pitch. One out, nobody on. And another foul ball. Here now the 2 2. This is on the ground over to first. Throw just does beat him to the bag as that was pretty close. That'll bring up Gary Sheffield. And you can see great numbers over the past few games. The 1-1. One, one. Is laid off for ball two. A bouncer up the middle, gloved by LeMahieu. Throw to first with time to spare, and the side is retired. Nothing doing here in the opening half inning. Toronto nothing. Sox coming to bat. You've got to tune to Major League Baseball, the show. Tyler Glasnow will be on the bump for game two of the series. What's your take on him Dan. Hey Matt we're getting a chance to look at a guy that's really struggled lately ERA over five in his last three starts so he's going to have to really improve on that one. Too many base runners too many hits and too many walks. He needs to get off to a good start and maybe throw up a zero in the first inning. Hit out towards second. Altuve has it. Throw to first is in time for the first down. Batting second, the third baseman, Allen Spoh. So bases are empty with one gone, and that'll bring up Alec Bohm. Yeah. Oh, he breaks out the hook there. Good for strike two. Put that in a memory bank. First time he breaks out a curveball right there, and it's a pretty good one. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. That is good. The first base Bases are empty here with two away. And up to bat next, one of the most prolific DHs to ever play, Edgar Martinez. Two and one to the Red Sox first baseman. And Dan Dero, the Blue Jays, as they enter play here this afternoon, they come in not exactly setting the world on fire as they've dropped five of their last eight ball games. Yeah, Maddie, what I need to see out of this offense today is some early production. Somebody's got to get on on base and, and put the defense on their heels. They've been struggling recently. They're not swinging the bats well. They got shut out yesterday, and this offense needs to adjust itself. Bounce to first. He'll get it to the pitcher, covering a terrific play as the side is retired. Another look at the fine play at first that concludes matters here in the inning. We're off to the second, scoreless on the show. Second inning set to go, and digging in is the veteran DH, David Ortiz. The 1 1 home. Pitch popped up. And there's the first out. That is it. The center fielder, number 24. And now, Willie Mays. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. No score here as we play inning number two. Inside, he misses ball four. 
Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. So a runner at first with one out now and striding in the speedy second baseman Jose Altuve. Three two pitch gets him looking up around the letters runner on first in a double play situation so you expect to see a lot of pitches down in the zone so I think that pitch up right there was a good one obviously the double play is more efficient but you're always going to take a K when you're on the mound to the plate now to Oscar Hernandez fastball taken a little under the letters called a strike Take a step back right here. After three fastballs in a row, there is no chance he throws you a fourth. Mays leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. Into center field, line drive base hit. The relay, but he'll be in there with a double. That is it. The first base. Standing in now, Yuli Guriel. Grounded to the right. LeMahieu gets to it from deep in the hole. Throw on to first is in time, and the Toronto rally goes for naught as the inning is over. So it's no runs on a hit, no errors, and two men left on. We'll go to the bottom half of inning number two, and we are tied nothing nothing. Last half of the second set to go, and that'll bring in the left fielder, Ryan Braun. Changeup called a strike, and he comes back even at two and two. 88 on a changeup? I remember when an 88 mile an hour fastball wasn't all that bad. Man, the game's changing. The 2 2 one more time he is swung on and missed strike three. Batting fifth. Next to hit, Jason hit. Giambi. Jason Giambi. Bottom of the second here with no score. And this one runs a little too far in. Ball two. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. He's set and the 2 1 pitch. And he fouls this one off. And good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now, three and two. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a three two change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Fouled away. The 3 2 one more time. Gets him looking strike three. Every pitcher looks to get off to a good start. And I'd say he's off to a good start. How about the first five six. batters he's faced? Three of them he sent down DJ. via the strikeout. Love Mayhew. So now to the plate, DJ LeMayhew. Fastball is looked at for strike two.
trying to strike out the side. Here it is. And this is taken low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. Batting seven, the right fielder, Jason. Now it'll be Jason Hayward. He takes his first cuts in this one with a man at first and two away. Pulled high in the air out to right field. And as it turns out, the two out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. Red Sox leave one. We'll move to the third with no score. And stepping in, Robert Byrne. Here now the 2 2. Lofted in the air out toward right center. And that'll get down for a base hit. I don't know how he got to that fastball right there. That looked like the old Tommy Hawk approach back in the 60s and 70s getting to that one. Into the box now. George Brett fouled off. Byrne aboard here at first with nobody out. And that's going to be high two and two now. I love everything this pitcher's got working right now. He's got presence. He's got great body language on the mound. He's got fastball command and a nice early feel for his off speed stuff. A full count three balls and two strikes. No pitcher likes to take the count to three and two, especially when you throw a non competitive pitch like that on two and two. That one wasn't even close. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Well, that's just a quality pitch right there. The location was excellent because if it's put in play, there's a good chance it's on the ground for a double play. And hey, a strikeout always works too. Late now, Andrelton Simmons. This is on the ground over to first, and that's through for a hit. He'll hold it second, and there are two aboard now. Boy, that's one of the, I guess, the advantages of hitting with that hole between first and second base, D-Row. First baseman has to hold that runner on. That leaves that right side wide open. Yeah, and credit the batter right there. Nice piece of hitting right there. Not trying to do too much. He took a look at the defense and saw where it was aligned and tried to beat him. At the plate, Gary Sheffield swung on and missed one and two now. Great pitch in that situation. If he makes contact on that one, more than likely he's hitting into a double play. Here comes the one two. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Big strikeout for the second out there, but he's not out of it yet. We'll see if he can feed off that K, wiggle out the jam, and keep this game tied. David Ortiz. Stepping in now, David Ortiz. And that's taken for a cold strike two. Probably better that he let that pitch go anyway. After seeing a lively fastball on the pitch before, it's pretty hard to sit back enough on a well thrown changeup. The set 
And the one two. Breaking ball misses the corner. Two balls and two strikes. Now two and two, two on, two out. This is one you have to make a pitch right here. The last thing you want to do is run the count full to three and two. Then the runners are going to be off to the races. Here's the two and two. He's got a good feel for his off speed pitches second time through the order. And we just saw three in a row. Two and two. Here it is. And an off speed pitch swung on and missed. And with that, the side is retired. A big time strikeout and some raw emotion as he gets out of the jam. We play two and a half. No score on the show. Back with Mark DeRozan, Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian as the Puerto Rican sensation and former number one overall pick Carlos Correa gets set to start the inning. The 1-1 one -one is swung on and missed for strike number two. Still a ball and two strikes. Tries to get him to chase the curve ball away, but it breaks outside. Two and two now. So you'd love for him to offer at that one, but the execution was flawless. Nice curveball that starts in the zone and breaks just out. Just a great take by the batter. Three two pitch and good patience exercised as he works out the walk to lead off the home half of the third. They haven't been able to register a hit against this guy but at least they have a base runner here. We'll see if that leads to something. Now into the box Carson Kelly comes in after a day of rest yesterday so we'll see if it did him any good. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Sometimes you got to be aggressive offensively, but sometimes you just let the pitcher dig his own grave. Patience and discipline seem to be the way to go right here. Correa on at first, nobody out. Here's a topper fouled off to the right, and that'll even the count at 2 and 2. Working for the punch out and the offering. Now a swing and a miss as he picks up another one. Make it four strikeouts already and there's your first out. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective. I think Matt what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it. But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. Ripped down the line. Oh, look at Brett. One there. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Nothing across here this half of the inning. On now to the top of inning number four. And we are tied nothing nothing. All set for the start of the fourth. And standing in is the veteran outfielder Willie Mays. I know we're not seeing a lot of offense in this one but there's still some game left. I'm looking to see these guys both offenses make some notable adjustments at the dish and try and scratch a few runs across. Three balls and two strikes to the Blue Jays center fielder. Now the payoff pitch home. There's a swing and a missile sent out to center field. And this one is gone a home run. So it's a solo shot to dead center home run number five on the year as the Jays get the game's first tally it's one to nothing.
Yeah and if you remember the previous pitch he couldn't get around on a fastball and was mad at himself. Well there's nothing to be mad about anymore unless you're the guy standing on the mound wondering what just happened. Standing in now Jose Altuve. Uh, could have been three and one instead it's two and two. Grounded back up the middle and that finds its way through for a base hit. There's a hard hit ground ball pitcher not able to get a glove on it hard up single up the middle. Yeah watch your lips right there Dan sent it back right where it came from. So now to the plate to Oscar Hernandez. Good swing just a little early and he'll see another payoff pitch. Payoff pitch on its way and a changeup swung on and missed for the first out. That strikeout was a real good example of a pitcher continuing to make a guy chase out of the zone. When you recognize a hitter is in protect mode, you don't have to come inside the strike zone. You can just expand further and further until he literally can't touch it. To the plate now, Yuli Guriel. Guriel behind a ball and two strikes. Altuve, base runner at first with one out. And a fastball blew it right by him and there are two down in a double play situation you kind of expect most pitches to be down in the zone hoping for a ground ball so that was an interesting pitch selection to go up in the zone. I think he caught him off guard a little bit. Next to stand in is Robert Byrne singled in his last at bat. Pitch outside the throw and he is out at second caught stealing to end the inning trying to move into scoring position with two away but not to be as we get another look more matinee baseball here on a Wednesday afternoon following this ready to go in the bottom of the fourth and set to go as the third baseman Alec Bohm. The 2 1 home. Taken strike two. He must know something we don't know. That was a center cut heater with count leverage in a big spot. I, I don't understand why he's taken. This one's down to third. Brett is there for it. Throw on to first, and one third baseman grounds out to the other, one away. Now back. First baseman. And that'll Edgar. bring in DH extraordinaire Edgar, Edgar. Martinez. Now the 2 1 pitch takes a pitch for strike number two. Hey, pretty aggressive pitch right there up in the zone. Surprised he didn't offer at it. Fastball misses in the dirt as he tried to get him to chase the low one. 3 2 counts are usually a time to challenge the hitter, but I think he'll be careful here. Shoot for the corner, and if you miss and you walk him, so what? That's better than him putting one in the seats. Here's the payoff pitch comes with the fastball but it's outside for ball four. Well you never want to issue a free pass if you can help it but when a hitter like that digs in you'd rather he's standing at first than driving a ball out of here and erasing your one run lead. So now it'll be the four hole hitter Ryan Braun comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. The 1 1. I'm pretty surprised by the location on those last three pitches. The book on him is that he hits the way pitch pretty well and he just saw three in a row out there. So does he go back out there again. 
No, Matt, I expect him to mix it up. Most catchers won't call for the same location over and over and over. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. The 3 1. Now a ball slapped hard the opposite way. Sheffield is there. Two down. Now back, the designated hitter, Jason. Next to dig in, Jason Giambi. He went down looking in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, Matty, and he was locked up by a good fastball for strike three last time. I'm interested to see if they attack him the same way. Come at him with hard velo late or snap something off in the dirt to see if he'll fish. Looking to punch him out again, the pitch, and it's fouled away. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off-speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back-to-back. -back. Martinez, the runner at first with two gone. Another foul ball, and this battle will continue. Ball two. These are the great matchups that happen throughout the course of a game. I don't think as a pitcher you can give in right here. He's a great hitter at the plate. He knows it. You know it. Keep executing. Maybe get him to roll something over. Three balls and two strikes to the DH for the Red Sox. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Now the three and two pitch and this pitch misses for ball four so that's going to move a runner into scoring position now with two away. Well they've struggled offensively in this one so far but after that walk they've got runners at first and second and look ready to make a little noise just need a big hit now. So stepping in is D.J. LeMahieu trying here to plate the tying run from second. The set and the one one. Swing and a little blooper to center. And there's the first hit of the game for the Red Sox. And not in time as the run scores. You know, D-Row, there are certain hitters that just love to come up and clutch two-out RBI situations. And this guy certainly is one of those guys. Yeah, they're able to slow the moment down. It's not for everybody. This guy has ice water in his veins consistently coming through in big spots. Nice job right there to tie this one up. In now, Jason Hayward. And that's into the corner, a foul ball in right. One run, just one hit, and no errors for the Red Sox to this point. Fastball too high, ball four. I think he was trying to be a little too fine there, and a walk is the result. Well, the good news is he has a force at every base. The bad news, a single probably drives in a couple of runs. So next to bat will be Carlos Correa, one of the bigger spots in the ball game so far. Base is juiced now with two away. The set and the 1-1. One -one. Definitely a big pitch coming up right here. He's going to be pumped if he can work his way out of this inning with the game still tied. Bases are loaded here, two down. Late making contact on that swing and will do it again on one and two. Got him. So the damage winds up not being as bad as it could have been as they'll strand the bases loaded. The side is retired. Just one hit in the inning, but it was a big one right here as it ties the ball game. We played four, all even at one apiece. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Blue Jays to discuss his thoughts on his team's lineup so far. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. He said the high pitch count they've run up is a result of a lot of great battles at the plate by his guys, and he's not wrong. So far, they've worked five full counts in their at-bats. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. 
So now to the plate, Robert Byrne. The 1-1. One, one. Soft liner towards first. But an easy play there at first as that becomes the first out of the inning. And now back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. And stepping in, George Brett. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. He hit the corner and tries for third. The relay throw, the tag, and he's called out trying to stretch two bases into three. Oh, you hate to see guys run into outs, especially when it's because of an unnecessary risk. He had two all the way, and he clearly should have just been happy with that. At the plate now, Andrelton Simmons. Blue Jays shortstop with a one and two count. Hey I don't mind that take right there that was a nasty breaking ball started outside the zone pop back inside the zone good spin rate on it move on to the next pitch and he fouls this one off here's another one two and he'll try to get him fishing there but he won't offer in the dirt and it's back to even at two and two. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there really battles doesn't take any pitches off he's a grinder always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher fastball just missed above the zone not a time to fool around right now on a three two count with the middle part of the order coming up expect a good pitch to swing at hit back up the middle. But Mayhew towards second. He's got it. Throw on to first. Gets him and the side is retired. One hit in the inning but no one left. Home half of the fifth coming up. All tied at one and one. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Thanks Matt. During the commercial break I talked about the Red Sox offense with the Boston manager. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've earned five walks in the game, and he said that's not only leading to a lot of run-scoring opportunities, but it's also forcing the pitching on the other side to work a lot harder and throw more pitches than they want to. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Jacob Barnes is into the ball game now as he'll make his fifth appearance of the season here. Set now for the bottom of the fifth and next to hit is the catcher Carson Kelly. The two one home. in the air out to center field. Mays is under this one. One down. The center fielder, number seven. So one down, no Lorenzo. one aboard. And that'll bring up the center fielder, Lorenzo Kane. The 1-1. One, one. He's in there for strike number two. Fouled away. Bases are empty, one man out. A little bouncer, but that one rolls foul.
ready on one and two. And he just misses inside with the fastball there. I know he missed with a fastball right there, but this guy's arsenal. You can't figure out what he's trying to do. He's got a lot of different directions he could go in right here. Changes up on him, but that's in the dirt for Rabal. And a cut fastball comes in a bit tight. It's ball four. Now battle. The third baseman. One out, runner at first, and that'll bring up Alec Bohm. He's set, and the 2 1 pitch. Hit out towards second. Altuve to his right. He has it over to Guriel for an inning ending double play. So they're held in check here this half of the inning. Five innings complete, all tied at one and one. Chris Russon takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Now to the plate, Gary Sheffield struck out in his last trip to the plate. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch outs will stick with you a little longer. Bullet back up the middle. There to take it now is Kane as he puts it away for the first down. Up next to the Blue Jays, the designated hitter, David. Or two. One out now in the Toronto sixth inning, and that'll bring up David Ortiz. The 1 1 home to 1 and 2 now. The pitch. And a good take there. Close, but it's two and two. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right handers starting to loosen up. One run, six hits, and no errors in the game for Toronto. And this is swung out and missed, so it's two up, two down to start the sixth inning. So next to hit is Willie Mays. He went deep last time up. Boy, this guy right here in that last A.B., how about straightaway center field? He hits a bomb, and as a pitcher, you're trying to pitch to the big part of the ballpark, but a guy like this, if he has pop to hit it out to center field, I might have to think pitching this guy down and away down on the corner. Out of the stretch, the 3-2 pitch home. Hit on the ground to short. Scooped up. Throw to first, beats him easily, and the side is retired. Blue Jays go down in order. Score remains deadlocked at one. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and here comes the first baseman, Edgar Martinez. Now the one and one pitch is taken for strike two. Now some definite signs of life in that Toronto bullpen. Both a lefty and a right hander begin to throw. Here comes the one two it is taken for ball two. He misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. Ryan Braun waits on deck. He's set. Here's the three and two. This is in the air out to straightaway center. Mays is right there, one down. The left fielder, number eight. So now here is Ryan Braun. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one.
three two pitch. I know he fouled that pitch off right there but he was definitely out in front. He was cheating to a heater no question about it. High in the air carrying well out to deep center. A ball that's carrying. Just missed a home run to the deepest part of the yard. It's off the wall. The relay. But he is in there with a triple. Anytime the ball is hit that hard to deep center you know it's going to be a tough play. The center fielder gives chase but it ends up coming off the wall and by that time you knew it was going to be a triple. At the plate Jason Giambi pitch taken several inches below the zone in fact. To short hit hard Simmons dives what a stop wow. Really good job of putting the ball in play right there even though it wasn't a base hit it does bring the go ahead run for his team. Next it'll be D.J. LeMahieu. He delivered an RBI single in his last trip. The 2 1 home. Jason Hayward would be next. Fouled off. Two out, nobody on. Lifted down the line and left. And foul. He'll try it again, three and two. Hit down the third baseline. Taken in by Brett. On to the first baseman Guriel, and that will end the inning. So one run on one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. We're through six full. The Red Sox are out in front, two to one. Robert Stevenson takes the mound now, and it appears he's being brought in to face the right-handed batter who waits next. Yeah you usually don't hear the term righty specialist very often but that's kind of how they're using him here Matt. Most hitters have a harder time against pitchers of the same handedness so we'll see if this move pans out. The 2 2. Now Altuve connects deep left field and it bangs off the monster. Uh, it's one of the beauties of playing in Fenway right there. Most places that's a double or a home run but at Fenway you're coming out of the box thinking can I make it to second because if it caroms and that left fielder fields it cleanly you're dead to rights at second base. I mean that's a heck of a job to hold him in a single. Now at the plate here is Teoscar Hernandez. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. The 2 2 pitch. When you're playing close games like this base runners mean everything so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. The 3 2 pitch is a wave and a miss he struck him out. Well this pitching staff has done a pretty good job right there. That's the fourth time he struck out and we're only in the second game of this series. Quick check on that tying run at first. Standing in now, Yuli Guriel. That's in there on the outer half, one and two now. Oh, 
There goes Altuve. Pitch is high. The throw. Offline throw, but they still got him. Good job of getting the tag down there. A lot of times, if a guy is going, it's going to be on the first couple of pitches, but he waited it out that time. Didn't matter, though. A good catch and throw, and they nabbed him at second. We're in the seventh inning now of a pitcher's duel. Two to one, our score. 2 2 pitch is fouled away. Pitch on the way. Popped him up. Bohm is there to make the catch, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Blue Jays. They still trail it here, 2 to 1. Rowan Wick gets the call from the pen to take the ball for the home seventh. Number 50. Now to the plate. Here is Jason Hayward. It was a walk in his last trip. The 1 1 home is looked at for ball number two. All even now, two and two. Here's the pitch. Ball three. Three and two now. And that misses ball four. It's a leadoff walk to start the home seventh. That leadoff walk is a great way to start this inning when you're looking to pad the lead. Could be the beginning of good things here in this half inning. And now in the box, Carlos Correa. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. And it's fouled away. Oh, the old classic two strike. Let's throw the fastball right down the middle. Not in this game. Got to believe you got to work the corners a little bit more. Fastball command is paramount at this level. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. And this is popped up. Back behind second. Simmons has a play. Looks it into his glove, and there's one gone. Now Next up, Carson Kelly flew out Come last back. time up. Kelly. Hayward stands at first with one out. One and two to the Red Sox catcher. That's exactly the pitch you don't want to be chasing in these situations. He's going to keep that ball down below the hollow of the knee, try and get you to ground into a double play. You have to set your sights at least belt high. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Inside, ball two. Throw over to the bag, and he'll dive back in safely. Here now the 2-2. Hits it high and deep out to center field. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and that'll bring up Lorenzo Kane. The 1-1. One, one. A bouncer up the middle. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. One left for the Red Sox. They still lead it 2-1. to one.
Nick Fry has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll bring in the first year catcher, Robert Byrne. Three two pitch. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential tying run here is aboard late in the game. Man, that's a tough one to swallow. You're hanging on to a slim lead, and the last thing you want to do is give up a leadoff walk. Seems like those are the ones that always come back to haunt you. So we'll see if that's the case here. Time called here as with the potential tying run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. Next to bat for Toronto, George Brett. In his last at bat, he was thrown out trying to stretch a double into a triple. Yeah, and he wound up getting thrown out. But he hit the ball well, and he'll look to do the same thing again right here, boys. It was unfortunate for him and the team the way that play ended, but it was a nice swing. And now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Our pitcher's duel continues here. Two to one score as we play the eighth. Well below the knees laid off on the change up there. This situation right here reminds me of sitting on the bench talking to John Smoltz Hall of Famer. He would always say even though the situation looked bad a pitcher is one pitch away from getting himself out of a tough jam. Quick check on that tying run at first runner back standing. The three and one pitch. Oh, it's on the ground to second. Did he get his double play? The second for one. Back to first, and a costly at bat there as the possible tying run is erased on the double play. Well, they got the tying run on base, but one ground ball later, and it's gone. He's going to be frustrated with himself after that. So now to the plate, Andrelton Simmons. And this one's low here, so the count swells to three and one. If you're at the plate right now, you have to realize who's on deck. I guarantee you something's over the heart of the plate. You have to be aggressive in the zone right here. Now a ball lined into left field. That's a base hit. There's a lot of moving parts in some guys' swings. It usually takes them a month or so to get it ironed out. To the plate now, Gary Sheffield. Loud contact there, but it's well foul. Simmons is off of first with two away. Little chopper back to the mound. Throw in time and the side is retired. Blue Jays held in check. They're down 2-1. Marcus Walden will come on in relief now as he'll make his 10th appearance of the season. Now Zach Pepper. Collins is into the ball game here as he takes over behind the plate. Now to bat Alec Bohm. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. People always talk about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and, now, and it's true. First so in the eighth man. inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice Mark job of attacking yeah. a hitter and sending him packing. Stepping in now, Edgar Martinez. 
And he goes with the slider here as that misses in tight. It's ball four. And with the bases empty and three balls, I think they were probably just saying, hey, we're not going to compound our mistakes here. Better issue a free pass and give him something to drive. So here's the cleanup hitter, Ryan Braun, tripled and scored in his last at bat, and we'll see what he does for a follow up act here. On a rope to the second baseman. And the runner gets back. No double play. Now back, the hitter. Now the Red Sox DH, Jason Giambi. 0 for 2 with a run batted in for him thus far. One and two, here it comes. Started to go. They'll look for the appeal down to third and ring him up, says the third base umpire. He's gone. Red Sox leave one. They lead it two to one. Jack Morris comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. set to start the ninth in this one and that'll bring up David Ortiz here now the 2 2 drilled the first and that is in the right field so the leadoff man's aboard here to kick off the ninth now battle number 24. Into the box now, Willie Mays grounded down the third baseline. And this will get by him at third, down the line. It's a fair ball. Dan, if they're going to crack through, this has got to be the opportunity they, they've been looking for right here. They've had a ton of hits, a ton of people on base, but no one has been able to come up with that big knock. Well, you know what, Dero? This pitcher's kind of worked around trouble the entire time so far. Another inning brewing right here. Let's see if they can't get a big hit here right here and bust through on this one. Into the box, Jose Altuve. Two balls and a strike to Jose Altuve. Hey, this isn't going to be an easy save. These guys are making it work for this one. Here's the 2 1. Toward the mound. This will be a tough turn, however. And he indeed takes only the out at first as the runners move to second and third with one away now. Now with the plate is Teoscar Hernandez. The potential tying run for him at third base. And it looks as though the decision makers in the dugout will give him a free pass to first. So the bases are loaded here on the intentional walk. And the force play is now in order. Well, tough to say if that was their intention or not. But it's not the worst thing that could happen. A force at every base now. So there are a lot of ways to get out of this. Now the Cuban import, Yuli Gurriel. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far. But his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. And here's a pitch swung on and missed one and two now. I always remember John Smoltz telling me, the greatest asset a closer can have is short term memory and this situation calls for it right here. He's got to forget that he has any traffic on a base pass and just attack the zone. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate and he'll have another shot at it here. Ready with the one and two. 
And this is swung on and missed a huge out there as the bases will stay loaded with two away now. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand. So they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. Final strike for the Blue Jays. Hits it high and deep out to center field. Looking up is Kane. It's out of here, and they've taken the lead in the ninth. Santa Maria. So one swing, and he unloads the bases on that one. And just like that, it's now a 5 2 ball game. And they complete the comeback with a flourish, going deep with a grand slam to take the lead. You don't get style points in this game, but I'd give them some if I could hand some out. Austin Adams takes over now with two gone here in the top of inning number nine. In now George Brett just behind the fastball there two strikes now it's not easy to get your barrel to a pitch that high that could be an effective location as long as he keeps it above the letters look out that one almost got away from him two and two now four runs here in this half inning. And he struck him out. So a good pitch there. And now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at bat if they want to get back in this thing. But one more look here at the big blow in the inning for the Jays. A grand slam home run. Last chance now coming up for the Red Sox. It's now 5-2 to Toronto. Christy Mathewson comes out of the bullpen to shut things down here in the ninth. All set for the bottom of the ninth, and that'll bring in DJ LeMayhew. Hey, not impossible, but highly improbable. Even when you're at home to score three runs off a closer like this guy, they've got the work cut out for him. And he'll come back with one in the dirt as the count moves to two and one now. And this one's going to bounce up to the plate. And easy take there. And it's three and one now. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got the count in his favor, three and one. And could this be the start? It's a long way back, but the leadoff man is on base to start their final set now of at-bats. Right fielder, Jason Hayward. Next up is Jason Hayward. He's 0 for 1 thus far. <laughs> LeMahieu gets his lead at first, nobody out. One and two now as that one's fouled off. From the stretch. Again he sends it out of play. Line drive to left. In there a base hit. Dan, as a former pitcher, 
Are you privy to this guy? I mean, he's been swinging the bat well. I know it's only April, but he's been using the entire field, staying line to line. That's what makes it so hard as a pitcher. When you can't go one way when you pitch a guy in, he pulls it. When you throw it away, he hits it the other way. He's having that ability right now just to be able to get the barrel to it, and he's having a real strong beginning of this season. And he indeed takes only the out at first as the runners move to second and third with one away now. Up next for the Red Sox. Digging in the next, catcher. Carson Kelly. Oh, it was a flyout for Kelly. him in his last trip. Yeah, and I'm sure he'd like a base hit of some sort right here, Matty. But hey, you know what? Another flyout wouldn't be all that bad. If he can get it deep enough, he should be able to drive in a nice run with a sack fly. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Now a swing and a miss, and he's behind one and two. Runners are at second and third with one down. And this is taken for a cold third strike. So they go right at him with the base open, and it pays off. And now there are two gone in the inning. Well, that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher's favor, but it wasn't outrageous. Hey, listen, calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time, especially when they're sort of borderline like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. Last strike now for the Red Sox. And now the count is full for the Boston center fielder. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. High in the air and deep to straightaway left. Back on it is the left fielder. That one is out of here. This game is tied. So a three-run blast is straight away left as we are all tied at five. These guys have really got some fight in them. A lot of teams would just roll over and give up after falling behind late in the game. But, man, that was a big momentum swing right there. Number 16 will take the ball now as the new pitcher. Number 16. So now to the plate, Alec Bohm. Good battle, count remains full. Payoff pitch on its way. Heading out towards shallow right. Sheffield is there and he'll put it away to retire the side. So hold everything as they catch lightning in a bottle here in the bottom of inning number nine and come back to tie this ball game. So now to the plate will be Andrelton Simmons. Shoots this one over to first. And that will get through into right. So there's your possible go-ahead run on base to lead off the inning. Nothing fires me up more than watching an offensive player stay inside a baseball and drive it the other way. Jared Trout will come on now and pinch run here. So now into the box is Gary Sheffield. His day at the plate hasn't amounted to much 0 for 4 but this is a great opportunity to make amends. Well when your team really needs you like they need it right here you have to be able to put your personal struggles out of your mind. Right now is all that matters. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Definitely in a tough situation facing the three hitter. You can work around him and maybe walk him to load the bases, but that just sets up the cleanup guy with the bases loaded. 
Runners are at first and third with none out. Now a fly ball, but far too shallow to get that run in. And he has delivered on three and two as he comes up big. It's a base hit. Throw to second will be in time, but the run's going to come in and score. Oh, man, I don't know how that happened. Looked to be a base hit to the outfield, but then all of a sudden the throw comes in and they get the force on the plate. To be honest, that just can't happen. At the plate, David Ortiz. Fastball, close, but he didn't get it two and one. Lifted down the line in left, but this will wind up being a foul ball. Ground ball sent back up the middle. LeMayhew's got it. There's one. Relay to first in time, and just like that, this side is retired. So one run here, one hit, no errors, and no one left. So now we'll see if these guys can get even in the bottom of inning number 10. It's the Blue Jays six and the Red Sox five. Jared Trout will stay in the ball game as a new shortstop. Stepping in once again is Edgar Martinez. A base knock to the outfield could score the tying run from second. Here now the 2 2. It's the top of the zone. He struck him out looking. You know, I'm not quite sure how that strikeout will be scored looking Double or field. swinging. He tried to check his swing, oh, yeah. but I'm pretty sure the home plate umpire oh. was ringing him up regardless. Oh. To the plate now, Ryan Braun. And a fastball misses there, ball four. Man, when you don't get a call on a pitch that good, you have to wonder if maybe it's personal. You can't blame him for being angry, but he's got to find a way to move on and focus on the next batter. To the plate now is the designated hitter, Jason Giambi. And we'll see what he can do with the tying run at second, the potential winning run at first with one away. Now the one and one pitch. Hard liner towards short. A diving effort here as he gets a glove on it. And they'll be left with no play as that's going to load the bases now on what should be ruled an infield single. Second baseman, DJ LaMayhew. Standing in now, DJ LeMayhew. One and two to DJ LeMayhew. Swing and a miss on a nasty slider right there. Always felt toughest pitch in the game. If you're a guy who liked to work the big part of the field, you were on that fastball middle away. Now that slider looked like a heater for about 56 feet 6 inches. And he might get them all home as this is hit high and deep out to straightaway left. And that ball is gone. Santa Maria game over. So he will touch them all on the grand slam and none bigger than that one as this ball game is over. Man I guess a regular walk off wasn't enough for him so he blasts a grand slam in the final of bat to win this thing. I've seen a lot of things in my day but that was something very special. Nine to six the final tally in this one the Boston Red Sox used a three run ninth to help propel them to the win Austin Adams claims the win out of the pen his first so that'll do it for us for Mark DeRosa Dan Plezak Heidi Watney and our entire crew I'm Matt Vaskersian you've been watching MLB the show for more make your way over to the new website the show dot com.
The final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious Boston Red Sox: nine runs, six hits, no errors. They left eight men on base. Yeah, 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 yeah.